Is it just us today, Eileen? It John is. Um, it will just be okay. you. All right. Well, let's call this meeting to order. Um, I need to notify anybody listening that pursuant to government code section 549.53E and the recommendation of the health officer, <coughs> excuse me, of the county of Sonoma, the downtown subcommittee will be participating via Zoom. Members of the public may view and listen to this meeting as noted on the city's website and as noted on the agenda. Um, Madam Secretary, will you review how the public may comment? Certainly. Members of the public wishing to speak during item three, public comment, or during any of the scheduled items will be able to do so by utilizing the raised hand feature or by pressing star nine on their phone. They will then be given the ability to address the subcommittee. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so let's move to item 3.1, Railroad Square Association Community Benefit District update. Rafael Rivera, Economic Development Specialist. Um, uh, Jack, before we move on, um, should we take the roll? Oh, yes. Thank you, Josh. Okay. No, Definitely no problem. Good idea. <laughs> uh, Chair Tibbetts? Here. Member Sawyer? Here. Uh, let the record reflect that uh, Member Fleming is not present. Okay, thank you. And uh, Consistent with what John was saying, before jumping to item 3.1, we'll do item two, public comments. Is there any members of the public wishing to speak on any items not listed on the agenda? Anybody listening in uh, may press star nine on their phone or using the raise hand feature via Zoom. We have no raised hands at this time, nor do we, oh, I apologize. We do have an individual, a member of the public who would like to speak. Um, let me just pull up the, uh, the screen for them to do so. Um, Flowers, oh, um, if you could uh, confirm that you are able to see the shared screen um, with the timer. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, hi. Um, uh, my name's Ed Flowers. I'm, uh, I live in um, Rinkin Valley. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm, I see on the agenda something about uh, Courthouse Square, and I'm not sure it's uh, what that's about, but uh, um, I'm, I, I contacted, uh, okay, did I lose you? Uh, no, you? no, we're here. We're still here. Okay, all right, uh, thank you. Um, anyway, what I'm uh, here to uh, discuss is Courthouse Square. Um, there are four um, parking spaces, it's around two on each side of the, uh, on each side of the square that have a charging station for electric vehicles. And they have, uh, they do not have any kind of signage on them that indicates that they're, uh, you know, that those sites could be used by electric vehicles to, um, to charge their vehicles. And so, you know, it's, it's kind of, um, senseless to my, to my mind, it's kind of senseless to have them there because they tend to be during the day, each day, unless it's eight o'clock Sunday morning, uh, to be occupied by uh, cars that have, uh, that are gas, gas consuming. Um, so I'm not sure why uh, the city went to the expense to have those uh, charging stations installed when they're not in use. Um, I drove a, Chev a Chevy Bolt and it's been frustrating for me to be um, at the square not being able to use any of those uh, uh, charging stations. So I, um, I'm here to request that there, there at least be some signage there to indicate that those slots um, to say are for um, electric vehicles. Um, as I speak, I'm in Pismo Beach. Uh, my wife and I are down here on a short vacation. Um, and I parked my vehicle in the uh, main uh, parking area, um, uh, parking lot uh, downtown um, Pismo Beach, and they have signage on there, two slots that have charging stations, and they say they're going to, they will um, 
tow your vehicle. If they find you parked there and you're not charging, that they will tow you, you know, at your expense, tow your vehicle. I don't think we, I'm not sure we need anything quite that draconian, but um, um, it would be very nice if there could at least be some signage um, that, uh, um, that the, these slots, these two on each side of the park, of the square, are there for um, um, EV, EV electric vehicles uh, to charge. Um, it would be thank, nice thank if you, Mr. Flowers. Uh, Mr. Would Flowers, be nice I, I am sorry, but your time is up. We do have uh, timing on public comment. Um, I will. We. I can't get into a discussion with you and about the subcommittee. Cannot get into a discussion with you about it because it's not listed on the agenda. Um, but I do believe that at our December meeting, uh, we will be having uh, this coming forward as part of our parking update. Um, so I hope you'll join us in December. Um, but uh, thanks for bringing this to our attention. Okay, let's let's move forward to item 3.1. Um, Rafael Rivero. Yes, good morning, Councilmember Sawyer, Councilmember Tibbetts, Chair Tibbetts, and uh, pleasure to see you both and uh, everyone joining on the call. Uh, welcome to the downtown subcommittee meeting. My name is Rafael Rivero. I'm a community, uh, a community every specialist, a economic uh, development specialist for the Economic Development Division. Um, and I am actually reporting on behalf of the Railroad Square Association. Um, I am actually um, on the board and therefore I will be reporting uh, on behalf of Chris Wilson, who is the executive director at the association. So uh, first of all, the association would like to acknowledge and thank uh, Mark Twee for his assistance in getting the old lights removed from the trees in Depot Park. And they would also like to acknowledge and thank uh, Mr. Tim Finnegan, who is also a city of Santa Rosa staff member. Uh, for doing such a great job in uh, coordinating the tree trimming in around Depot Park. The area surrounding the park looks so much lighter and now the association can move forward with uh, the plans to um, uh, do some lighting around uh, the trees there at Depot Park, including uh, the large palm tree uh, before we get to the holidays or around uh, as we get closer to the holiday season. Uh, they would also like to thank uh, Mr. Rivero for uh, facilitating some of these meetings. The association has actually signed a contract with the same electrical contractor that the DAO used to wrap the trees in the downtown area. So um, the association would also like to thank uh, Cadence for the referral. Uh, there's been some uh, significant uptick in uh, vandalism in the, in the area, broken windows, uh, break-ins, transients uh, sleeping on the streets, sidewalks, private properties uh, throughout the district. Just recently, a window was broken at Soul Desire, very unfortunate. And just prior to that, the uh, one of the trucks at the TVAX uh, business uh, got their catalytic converter stolen. A car was also broken into at the Hotel La Rose parking lot behind Aroma Roasters. The dedicated security continues to patrol the area during uh, five nights a week with uh, random drive-bys on two nights. It's uh, definitely a problem and the association continues to encourage businesses uh, to file uh, police reports when uh, some of these in, uh, unfortunate incidents occur. Uh, the association would also like um, uh, to appreciate the work of Jenny Lynn Holmes. Uh, a lot of people know um, uh, Jenny Lynn and she uh, actually works for Catholic Charities. Uh, they would like to uh, acknowledge uh, her for keeping the district up to date on the uh, changes regarding uh, security and um, everything that's happening uh, with the um, uh, relocation uh, of individuals from uh, 7th Street over to uh, St. Vincent de Paul area. Uh, they would also, um, uh, they also like, uh, sorry, the association would also like to uh, mention that uh, first phase, the first phase for the tree trimming on 4th Street and 5th Street has been completed. And um, there's also some proposals for to take on Wilson Street and 3rd Street as part of the, the next phase. Uh, the wayfinding project is going well, it's moving forward. There's been a few bumps in the road with uh, the association not necessarily understanding the process on how that goes. 
uh, but they have uh, relied on guidance uh, from the city representatives and city um, uh, community development uh, division. And uh, they're presently uh, working on uh, filing for an encroachment permit so that the uh, project can, uh, can, can move forward and these uh, poles can be installed. Uh, the ad hoc committee has been working with the city staff, Ross Sprinkle, Jason Nutt, and others uh, to get this process uh, through. Uh, this will be a, a total of eight uh, wayfinding signs around the area, pointing to hotels, uh, restaurants, and other businesses, et cetera. The, uh, there's also a sidewalk repair project uh, that continues to be discussed, and the association has created a, an ad hoc committee to look at costs and possible uh, phases of this project. Um, uh, they hope, or the association wishes, uh, to continue to work with the city to explore for funding opportunities to bring the project to fruition. Uh, there are safety concerns, especially, especially as it gets dark earlier and uh, with the rains uh, coming our way. There are areas that pose a great danger and uh, risk uh, to pedestrians and such. Uh, the holidays are fast approaching and uh, the association is stepping up the marketing uh, with radio ads and print ads. Uh, They're excited to bring back the free carriage rides, which will be every weekend through the month of December. And they're adding holiday and music activities uh, on weekends and uh, some old fashioned holiday spirits uh, in Railroad Square. Our restaurants and, and shops continue to be busy, con continue to thrive and uh, they're looking forward to the branch line opening soon which is where the old uh, flying goat coffee used to be and uh, should uh, this should be happening this month in the month of uh, November so uh, the association is wishing to continue to work uh, with uh, city staff and continue bringing uh, great things to railroad square uh, so that is the report from the uh, railroad square association and um, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank Rivero. Uh, any questions, Mr. Sawyer? No questions. Thanks, man. Thanks. A great report. Appreciate it. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's go to public comment on item 3.1. Are there any members of the public wishing to speak on this item? Uh, okay, apologies. seeing none. I, I apologize, I was on mute. Uh, we do, we have no raised hands at this time. Okay, thank you very much. All right, let's move on to item 3.2. Good morning, everyone. Chair Timmons, Council Member Sawyer, nice to see you both. Um, quick, uh, quick updates for downtown businesses. We have a few new businesses that have opened, which we're really excited about. Um, Mercedes Hernandez, who we worked with all summer long uh, to bring SoCo Market downtown, has opened a brick and mortar um, vintage store on 4th Street, Holy Vintage. They opened on Friday in the Old Maid local spot. So really excited that um, we reached out to her, brought her downtown uh, to, to have her market here and made it easy for her to have her market and um, helped her see the potential in um, being in downtown Santa Rosa. Uh, Warike, which we've all been very excitedly um, waiting for, has finally opened as well. Seems to be going pretty well. Um, and then we had a new, um, a new boutique on D Street open, and uh, we have a, a new art and tattoo studio in the works um, in the old Skeeters location on the 600 block. It's looking really, really good in there. So excited to see that, um, that come to fruition. Uh, some of the big things that are kind of tackling our business owners will surprise nobody. Um, first is parking. Everyone's very eager to get parking squared away for 2022 as the incentives um, are scheduled to end at the end of this year. Um, the, the three incentives that are in place for, <clears throat> for the garage is currently free after five, uh, first hour free and free weekends have been really, really beneficial to our uh, downtown business owners and property owners as they work to lease open space. Um, and so we're, we're eager to work with council and city staff to um, extend those parking incentives and 
um, come up with a plan to make downtown parking more um, uh, accessible and friendly to the community, uh, make it easier for them to come down for both shopping, dining, and um, all of the events and activities that um, the DAO is hosting downtown. Um, our, our property owners who are leasing office space also want to figure out how to improve employee parking options um, as a way to help combat some of the, the barriers and challenges that they face when, um, when leasing office space. I think we all know that office space, um, there's an incredible amount of office space now available um, due to a number of circumstances, uh, first and foremost, the pandemic, but um, also uh, due to some of the challenges of, of having, having a business downtown, parking is definitely toward the top of the list um, as are uh, issues with the homeless population. We, we continue to, um, that continues to be the bulk of the work from the Street Plus team uh, every day, interacting with uh, the folks who are uh, taking up residence downtown, um, spending time on the square, spending time in Comstock, um, sleeping in, in doorways, uh, utilizing doorways as restrooms. It's, it's an ongoing challenge for our team. Um, and uh, they continue to see new faces. Um, seems to be the, the regular, the new normal is that there's new faces every day, uh, which, is, which is concerning for them as they, um, more and more time, more and more of their time goes toward um, helping to support and manage the homeless population. Uh, unfortunately, similarly to Raphael's report, we have also had an, an increased number of reports of break-ins and thefts downtown. Um, I've had four reports of uh, break-ins and thefts inside buildings, um, a salon, one of our uh, office spaces, actually two of our office spaces, um, and a retailer. Um, breaking in, stealing cash boxes, tablets, things that are quick and easy to grab. <laughs> it's, um, it, it, they're all working with SRPD and they've shared uh, what footage they have if they have footage. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping that, um, I was hoping to see it on the agenda today, but I'm hoping that, that we'll be able to continue the conversation about expanded CCTV footage downtown. Um, because I know that, that SRPD has shared that that does seem to be a good deterrent. So. Uh, we'd love to figure out how we can work with the city to address this because um, it, it appears to be an expanding issue. Um, that's it for the for the unfortunate news. I can move on to some of the, the happier stuff now. Um, our DAO committees are really actively trying to support all aspects of downtown. Our design and improvement committee is has a, a new um, new lighting installation going in in the next couple of weeks. We also have a holiday decoration installation going in. We're gonna be putting, I think something like 1200 snowflakes in trees throughout downtown. So um, should look very festive and wintry down here. Um, and then our tree planting project, which we, we put on hold in the spring because of the drought is now scheduled to move forward. Uh, we, we have tagged all the trees on 4th Street with green tape. There's 31 of them that are gonna be removed. They're gonna be replaced by either crepe myrtles or ginkgo trees. Um, and then the DAO is responsible for managing those. We'll be cleaning up after them, making sure they are watered and um, hopefully we get them in, in time so that they can um, uh, establish themselves well this winter. And um, we've also been really, really busy on the community engagement side. Um, we, I don't think we've met since our block party in September, but. We held our end, end of the summer block party. It was really fun. I think attendance was down because it happened to be raining, um, kind of an unexpected thing for, for mid-September, but um, we had a few hundred families come out, a lot of fun on the square, music activities. Um, it was really, really great to see uh, all those folks come out. And then on Friday, we had our first ever Fall Fun Fest. Um, it was a huge success. Uh, we partnered with our friends at Bayside Church. They brought seven carnival games downtown. We unfortunately couldn't close the streets because it was a little bit cost prohibitive to us. So we had to have all the trick-or-treaters restricted to the sidewalks. Um, but we did find some space on the sidewalks to put, um, put the carnival games out. <clears throat> so we, we drove traffic to, um, I think we had 28 or 29 businesses who handed out candy. 
I, I, I have never been a part of an event since I started working for the district where I've had such positive feedback from both our business owners and our community members. So, um, you know, I, I don't think many of our businesses uh, did business. I think their main business was giving away free candy, but um, they all got new, new families in front of them um, who got exposed to, uh, to their restaurant or to their, to what they, they're selling in their shop. So it was, it was a really big success for everybody. Um, and we, we ended the night with a costume contest. Mayor Rogers came out and um, was one of our judges and uh, then showed a movie on the square. So we're, we're really happy to be able to kind of bring this, this first time event to downtown. Um, and I think I'm already getting questions about when it's being hosted next year. We're not quite ready to start planning yet, but um, hopefully we can make it happen again. Um, and then I was hoping to, to report about this at our, at our last meeting, but it was canceled. So um, we, are, we are full steam ahead on the synthetic rink for the square. <laughs> Um, we had to raise about $100,000 to, um, to bring it in uh, between the rink rental cost and the infrastructure to support it. And, and we've done that. Um, thank you to, to Tara, who's been helping us uh, move forward with the permit and, and Gabe for helping us figure out the logistics of being on the square. I'm sure we're gonna be relying heavily on city staff as we work through the logistics of everything. So um, we're just grateful for the ongoing support and making this happen. We've had uh, such great response from, um, from people in the community who are just thrilled to see this come downtown. We are trying to make the installation as, as festive as possible. We've got a lot of decorations coming in. We have um, at least one, but hopefully three markets that are happening during the course of the, of the rink being open. And then we also have our, um, our tree lighting ceremony taking place on November 26th. So we have a lot of fun plans for that. It's gonna be just um, a huge celebration of everything Santa Rosa. So we, uh, between the chamber and VSR, Visit Santa Rosa and the downtown district, we're really excited to be bringing um, this activation to downtown. Um, it's a, uh, an incredible amount of work, but it's definitely something we wanna to provide to the community, um, especially after the last couple of years. So we're grateful to be able to be bringing this um, Bring this to Courthouse Square. I know I'm going to get some logistical questions about the rink, so <clears throat> I'll try to kind of address address those a little bit now. Uh, we are selling tickets. There, um, you can find them from the downtownsantarosa.org website. They cost right now. We've got early bird pricing, so it's seven dollars and fifty cents a ticket. Um, that includes a, a skate rental. Uh, we have we have skates on site for a child size nine through a men's size 13. If you have feet outside of that size range, uh, you will have to bring your own skates, but you can, um, you can absolutely skate on the synthetic ice with, um, with regular ice skates. They just need to be sharp. Um, we have uh, volunteers who are operating the rink, which helped us with um, not having to staff the rink for, for the whole time it's open. Uh, and then they're all from local nonprofits, so they're they're receiving pro the proceeds from the rink, uh, which is a nice way to you know go back, continue to support the community. Um, and the the rink opens on the nineteenth. Um, we have it's open Friday three to seven, Saturday and Sunday eleven to seven, uh, from the nineteenth of November through January 9th. and then it's also open. Uh, four hours a day during holiday weeks. So the week of Thanksgiving, um, it's open during the week, Christmas and New Year's. It's open for four hours a day, every day with the exception of um, the holiday itself. So this is, this is definitely a trial and error situation for, for the chamber. We've never done anything like this before. We're learning as we go. Um, but we are, um, we're very excited about it. We're looking forward to um, is starting to get the word out through our marketing efforts, which haven't even really kicked off yet, but we've had quite a few ticket sales already, which is exciting um, and uh, excited to be, to be moving forward on this. I think, you know, we, we had a lot of requests to bring, to bring an ice rink in. This synthetic rink, I think really hits the mark because it doesn't use power, it uh, doesn't use water, 
and um, it still allows us to create that fun, festive uh, winter winter activity for everyone downtown. So happy to answer any questions on that if there's anything I, I haven't touched on. Cadence, I, I, I do have a question. What is the material that this synthetic material, have you touched it? Have you seen it and how, how, it, how it functions? How, it, how did they, what is, what's it made of? It's a synthetic, um, it's a, basically like an engineered uh, plastic is the easiest way to describe it. Um, mm -hmm. it. It functions just like a conventional rink. So you're able to, there's, there's a couple really fancy tricks. So I don't know, Council Member Sawyer, if you can do a, a toe pick, but I think that's one of the only <laughs> things that's restricted because uh, it could cause damage. But um, otherwise it functions just like a regular rink. So it has really good glideability, which is a word that I've, I've recently learned um, and is, uh, is supposed to, supposed to feel almost identical except for the fact that it's not as hard if you fall and not cold yeah. so um we've i've seen a lot of uh, video demonstrations one of our one of our partners um our nonprofit partners who's running it uh who is uh connected to snoopy's home ice they they use it for um for training and for uh when they when they do floats and parades and things like that so um they they said it's great we've everyone I've talked to who's been on it has had, you know, really positive feedback. So um, I'm, I'm excited to test it out. Uh, I don't know how long I'll, I'll, I'll be out there, but I think it'll be really fun to, um, to, to try it and, and, and see how it goes. We're going to have holiday music playing and, and uh, festive decorations too. So hopefully the, um, the lack of actual ice will be not really an issue. All right. Excellent. Thank you. The company, in case anyone's ice. interested, the company is called Glice, G-L-I-C-E. So they're a Swiss company, um, and you can look them up and, and learn a little bit more about the product. Thanks, Cadence. I, I have a question for you relating to the parking extension. Mm -hmm. um, ha, have you had the opportunity to sit down with the parking department and develop a long-term plan? And the reason why I ask is, you know, the, these extensions seem to be you know, coming and coming, and I don't, I don't get the impression that there's really a lot of long-term um, calculus behind yeah. behind it. And that's not, I'm not trying to say that in an accusatory way to you or to our staff, but I'm wondering if if these if these requests, which I think are valid, uh, keep coming to the council, it might behoove us to actually have a plan in place to make sure revenue is coming into the parking district, but maybe those. Um, uh, benefits, you know, can remain. Yeah, we, we have not, um, not since Kim has left. Um, and I, I'm not sure if her position has been filled yet. I haven't, I haven't heard about that, but we did, I have had a couple of conversations recently, both with, um, Mayor Rogers and council member Alvarez. And I think it's, it's, it's the same situation. We don't want to be coming to you every six months saying, you know, we need these extensions. They've been beneficial and, and we're really eager to work with uh, council and city staff to come up with a, a longer term solution. One of our challenges is, is that it's just it's so hard to market and promote a temporary program for parking, because if you if you put something out there today that says free parking on the weekends and then two months that free parking is gone and someone pulls into the garage and they, they leave paying five dollars, you know, they, they're going to be frustrated. And, and it's just it's hard to work on that on that messaging. Um, so that that's one of our challenges. Um, but we're, we are really eager to work with the district and city staff, um, but are un, unclear who from the parking district we should be working with right now. Mr. Rivero, do you know if the, we were filled the vacancy in the parking district? I should know, and I don't mean to put you on the spot. I don't believe we have uh, yet, as of yet. Uh, however, we will have a representative uh, from the parking division at the December meeting. Uh, addressing some of these concerns, including okay. the uh, EV Thank parking as well. Great, I appreciate that. Um, Cadence, you know, I, it sounds like we might not be able to jump on this as quickly as, as I would like, um, but maybe uh, if the council considers an extension during that next extension, there's maybe some marching orders that can come from the council to the new director to come up with a financially balanced plan to, to help you accomplish those goals. That, that would be great. I'd be happy to 
continue talking about that to see how we can support that um, offline, if that's helpful. Sure. Um, well, thank you so much. Uh, those were my questions. Let's turn to public comment for item 3.2. Are there any members of the public wishing to speak? There are. Um, Mr. Yeager, I will go ahead and pull up the public comment screen. And Mr. Yeager, um, if you should be able to unmute and please confirm that you're able to see the timer. Thank you. Mr. Yeager. Here we are. Okay, great. Just give me the right to unmute. Um, uh, just wanted to say quite recently, um, the city council voted in an urgency ordinance for uh, making short term rentals uh, hosted and unhosted um, uh, legal in Santa Rosa. And what that does is now bring a whole bunch of people who, after we're registered, I host in Santa Rosa, host rental. It brings a whole bunch of people that you are now connected with that can help direct keep visitors and people that we host downtown. And so I think some thought should be given to how do we make that connection? Previously, I don't think there was any sort of organization or registration process for hosts. So there wasn't a way to reach all of them at once. And I think perhaps after registration, you'll have all of our contact details. The more we know about what's going on downtown, the more, uh, whether it's these uh, the things like the ice skating rink, new shops, new restaurants, we can support these businesses, not only by going and spending our own dollars downtown, but by directing the people that we host in our homes to go visit restaurants, go visit shops, go visit cafes. And so I don't know who the right body or person is to make that outreach to hosts. I don't work for the city, but I think it's just an idea. Like as I sit here, I think I, I wanna know more. And the more I know, the more I can direct folks downtown. I thank you for your time and um, I look forward to hearing more. Thank you, Mr. Yeager. Um, Madam Secretary, do we have any other hands? We have no additional hands raised at this time. All right, I'll bring it back to the subcommittee. Councilmember Sawyer, do you have any follow-up questions or comments? Okay, seeing none from Councilmember Sawyer, I don't either. Cadence, thank you so much. Uh, at this point, we will now, oops, I lost my agenda. Uh, we will move on to item 3.3, the public safety update. On the agenda here, it says we have Officer Travers. Um, however, I don't know if we have, uh, I'm seeing a chat, chat box here saying we may have Sergeant Barrett. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Good morning, everybody. It is, it is Sergeant Barrett today. Uh, so Good morning. Good morning. we have recently had the opportunity to meet with and work with members of the St. Rose neighborhood. Um, through working with them, we're able to provide uh, trespass letters to some of the businesses throughout that area, uh, which have allowed us to address some of the trespassing issues um, that were a major concern for the citizens in the St. Rose neighborhood. Uh, we've also noted an increase of loitering around the 4th and D Street area since the opening of the, the new Starbucks. Uh, they have free Wi-Fi and a lot of seating there, so it makes it an attractive spot for, for people to hang out and uh, deposit trash and things like that. Um, We've increased our routine security checks of the downtown area and in particular the 4th Street area. Uh, we know that the late night window breaks and break-ins have been an issue and despite our efforts, it still continues to be an issue um, that we're, we're trying to address. Um, it it tends to occur in like the 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. hours, um, which is just a very low staffing time for us. Uh, the downtown enforcement team has continued to maintain a high level visibility downtown. Uh, we continue to utilize municipal code violations as well as criminal arrests to help keep the downtown area free of crime. And we've also recently adjusted the hours of one of our teams. They're now coming in at seven in the morning to address some of the issues and concerns with uh, sleepers in front of the businesses in downtown and uh, Belwood Square area. And that's all the updates I have this time. Thank you, Sergeant. Council Member Sawyer, do you have any questions? I don't, Jack, but thank you. Okay, 
Neither do I. Let's turn to public comment on item 3.3, .3, the public safety update. Any members of the public wishing to speak at this time? We have no raised hands at this time. Okay, thank you very much, Sergeant Barrett. Appreciate you being here. And also I do wanna say uh, to the men and women that adjusted their schedules to come in a little bit earlier, appreciate that a lot. Let's move to item 3.4, maintenance of Courthouse Square. We have Tim Finnegan, Parks Crew Superintendent. Tim, if you would please unmute. Tim, we're unable to hear you. Chair Tibbetts, perhaps uh, we could move on to Tara Thompson and I'll see if I can um, sort out uh, if there's a technical issue with Tim. That would be great. Thanks. Let's move to, I believe that's item 3.5. Hi, um, sorry, it takes a minute to rejoin as a panelist, but I'm here. Um, so I'm Tara Thompson, Arts and Culture Manager, and I can provide an update on special event permits as well as the public art program. I did um, uh, just this morning include a list of pending permits in the downtown area. Um, so that is available for the public to view. I can also go ahead and share my screen just so we can take a little peek at it right now. So stand by just a second. Okay, I hope everyone can see that. Um, let's see if I can make that a little bit bigger. Is that visible? Okay. Um, so let's see, we have a little bit of an uptick in permits, um, at least we have since our last meeting uh, in September. Um, so we've had a few obviously that have happened between September and November 1st, um, but this list is just showing what's, what's current, what's coming up uh, through the end of the year. So currently in the square right now, we have the Dia de los Muertos event, which was a two day event yesterday, overnight, last night and today. Um, that is a, an event that has been in the square for many years, um, but had not been uh, last year, did not take place last year or in 2019 either. So it's great to have that back. Um, we also have Winter Blast coming up this Saturday. That's in the SOFA district, um, which is a great art fair and um, street uh, festival in the artist studios, as well as on Sebastopol Ave and South A Street. And then as Cadence mentioned, the ice rink as a part of Winter Lights, um, that is a, an application on our list. We also have a Santa Rosa Turkey Trot coming to downtown this year. Um, this event had been up in Healdsburg previously and is now going to be starting out of Courthouse Square using the Santa Rosa Creek Trail for an out and back 5K on Thanksgiving morning. And then uh, our ongoing permit with the Metro Chamber of Commerce open and out has been extended through the end of this year to continue to allow the ongoing kind of activation and activities to support people coming back downtown using outside spaces. Um, and they have a couple of upcoming events that are listed there um, throughout the rest of this month and December. So that's what we have right now in terms of our upcoming permits. Um, and I'll continue to update this list and provide it at the next meeting. Thank you, Tara. Um, Councilmember Sawyer, do you have any questions? No questions, just thanks Tara for your report and you know, staying on top of these permits. It's, I know it's a lot of work and it's much appreciated. So thank you. Thanks. Yes, thank you. I can um, go let's ahead go and on give Oh, sorry, I, I have an arts update. I can provide that as well uh, before we do um, comments. So just quickly, um, I think since the last time I presented here, the Art and Public Places Committee has approved the artist for the Fifth Street Parking Garage mural project. So the artists 
team is called Rough Edge Collective. It consists of San Rosa artists MJ Lindo Lawyer and Joshua Lawyer, and their proposal, Help Each Other Grow, will be installed early next year on the southwest corner of the parking garage. Um, at the December meeting of the Art and Public Places Committee, we accept, uh, expect to recommend the final list of words and phrases and languages for the Unum sculpture for Courthouse Square um, to be approved by, by the committee. Um, over the summer, the committee also approved casting and installing the Asawa panels um, on a new fountain in the square in bronze. I mentioned that at the last update. And right now we expect to have the funding secured for this by the end of this month. And then we will move forward with that casting process. Uh, the Art and Public Places is excited to be implementing a new strategic plan, um, including working in smaller ad hoc task forces focused on diversity, equity, inclusion, and access engagement and project development. And one of the projects coming out of the project development task force is working with the Santa Rosa Forward team on the general plan update and including working with artists to encourage diverse participation in upcoming outreach. So I will stop there, happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not seeing any questions from subcommittee members. Let's go to public comment on item 3.5. We have no raised hands at this time. Okay, we'll, we'll bring it back. Tara, thank you so much for that update. Um, we'll see you next month. And is uh, Mr. Finnegan ready for 3.4? Mr. Finnegan, if you could. Uh, yes. Yeah. Wonderful, thank you. Um, sorry about the, the, the computer issues. For some reason, the audio wasn't uh, coming through and so I had to log, off, log back in. So I apologize for that. Um, good morning, Council Chair Tibbetts and Council Member Sawyer. A um, few things to report on the maintenance wise, uh, since it's been a while since we've been able to get together. Um, but uh, I did conduct a, a inspection of the uh, bunya bunya trees there last month um, to take a look at the cones uh, on those the trees, both in uh, Courthouse Square as well as uh, Depot Park. And uh, to my surprise that the, the cone size was very small. Um, they were basically a baseball size or softball size at this point. And so uh, given the size of it and given the, the cost associated with uh, the, the equipment rental, uh, I made the decision that uh, um, doing the inspection at this point would, would suffice. Um, we will reschedule um, in two years to do another um, inspection and at that point I anticipate that we will be doing the harvesting of those cones. Um, the, uh, it just made sense given the size and that the, uh, the threat um, of those cones coming free at this state uh, was pretty minimal and that uh, we were able to then inspect both sites in one day and I feel comfortable and confident as far as uh, public safety around those trees that uh, we are good for another two years. Um, so that made me feel a lot better actually getting eyes on them and seeing what the condition is um, and then planning on uh, doing this again um, in the future. So I was glad that took place there in um, September. Um, last week, as you heard, uh, last week we did finish doing the, the pruning at Depot Park. And uh, surprisingly, as much light uh, that we were able to bring into that area now is just, it's, it's just, phenomenal um, just doing that, uh, that pruning. So um, the, the lights can be put up, not a problem. Um, we will continue to uh, watch some of those trees. Uh, those are um, pear trees that have, some of them have that fire blight in those um, and would be hate to have to remove those trees, but um, we'll just keep an eye on them moving forward. Um, but uh, hopefully the pruning does, does help those health of the trees and uh, the lights can be put up as planned. Um, Last week, um, after the, the big storm that we, that we received, um, the Santa Rosa Creek, it came up for really quick and uh, unfortunately, or expectedly, um, put a lot of the, the greenway uh, underwater. Um, so um, this past week, um, we spent a, a day there with uh, cleaning the uh, greenway, uh, doing silt removal, uh, debris removal from the high waters. And so that's now all open and, and cleaned, which um, 
is good, but uh, surprisingly how much water we got in such a short period of time and the level of the creek came up so quickly, um, there wasn't more damage than, there was, than what we, we, we saw there. So it, it was good in that sense, but it just kind of caught us off guard. Um, in the next few weeks, um, we will be scheduling, or I will schedule with the electrical department. We will do a, a, a check of the lights uh, for the Christmas tree down in uh, Courthouse Square um, and make sure that all, everything is functioning. And when we push the button, the lights will come on. Um, I think sometimes it, as much times as you prepare for this, you always worry about that one, that one second um, that the lights don't come on, but we will be prepared and we'll do everything we can to make sure those that does not happen. The lights come on as scheduled. Um, finally, um, just as a, a information, we we have been taking part in a citywide uh, parks assessment, um, working with uh, parks planning, uh, Jen Santos, and uh, doing an assessment of all our parks included those parks that are in the downtown area, Courthouse Square, Fremont, Depot Park, um, Ray Park. Um, all, we've been uh, uh, um, putting our input in and as far as the main side of it. Um, and I believe that there is going to be a report that being presented to the city council here in the next month or two uh, regarding that assessment, um, looking at um, all of our parks and where they're at as far as their maintenance levels. And then um, I, I believe that the, uh, some discussion on funding and priorities related to that assessment. So um, this is an overall look at all of our parks um, and looking at um, everything, kind of um, comparing things uh, across the board. So I think it will be a great information for everybody um, to take a look at. So I guess I encourage uh, everybody to, to watch the agendas as they come up and if uh, when they see that to uh, listen to it because I think it will give a, a, a really broad view of our parks and their conditions and um, give us some direction on on maintenance. So that's my report. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Finnegan. Council Member Sawyer. Thanks, Jack. Um, Tim, um, regarding the bunya bunya trees, uh, is the smaller cones an indication of stress on the trees from a lack of water? It's actually kind of bittersweet because if, if they don't have the really large cones, we have less of a an issue around them, um, you know, falling and hurting people. Um, is, is have they been assessed by an arborist to know whether or not this is um, this is a, a re reflection of the of the weather? Um, or if it's just kind of a, a, a fluke where they came out smaller this year than, than normal, because I can't think of the last time that they were the size of softballs. Um, so I'm just curious if they've been assessed and if there's any, anything that we need to do, whether it be, of course, now we're moving into to rain, which is, which is great. Um, but uh, yeah, just, it's, just a, it's a concern of mine that they may be under stress and therefore smaller cones. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, we have not had them assessed by arborists. Um, and through, uh, you know, the, the work that I've done and the research I've done um, of the trees, that, that's a very, very uh, possible reason for the size of the cones is that they are under a little bit of stress. Um, the trees themselves, the vegetation, um, it, it, they look healthy. Um, there's no signs of stress within the plant itself. But it could be just that portion of it, the development of the cones could be stress related. Uh, and that's the only thing that I can really link it to um, is the drought. Um, yeah. But uh, probably through my connections, it probably wouldn't hurt for me to get more information on that. Um, just to make sure because we'd hate to lose those trees or end up you know, being a symptom of something bigger. Right. So it would be something that I would definitely uh, would like to follow up and I can report that back at the next meeting um, of new information, just um, kind of guess to put our minds at rest or knowing what's actually happening out there. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. And I think your assessment is, is probably accurate. I mean, if the tree, if the, if the crown and the, and the rest of the foliage on the tree, trees look, um, look uh, reasonably healthy, I'm sure it takes a lot of energy to produce those large cones. And if there's less water, 
probably, you know, it's the, the, the tree is going to respond to that. So um, you might even be able to wait until next year and see if there's a trend uh, in the in the cones. I'm just wondering if 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 indeed it's a moisture issue that we because I, I doubt that they're being irrigated by I don't I doubt there's irrigation on those trees. I, I wouldn't think given their age. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah, uh, usually, you know, trees are, we try to uh, promote just them surviving on their own um, and not uh, feeding them water uh, just because that's a tree's nature. Um, if you give them too much water, you don't get the root development. And these are well established right. trees. Yeah, so, that's yeah, there's true. No, there's no water currently um, on those trees. Yeah, I did. I, I, I would hope not. We would probably create more of a problem by watering them like people that. that have lawns on their uh, below their valley oaks and it just creates root rot so i'm mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm pleased they're not being irrigated but like i said you might you, know, you might be able to wait until next year and see if the cones are, are any larger or or of the same size and that would indicate maybe more of a trend and then perhaps could have them evaluated then i think with the rains coming now we're probably in pretty good shape agreed Thanks, Council Member Sawyer. Thanks, Mr. Finnegan. Let's move to public comment for item 3.4. Any members of the public wishing to speak? We have no public comment at this time. Okay, seeing none, we'll bring it back. Uh, thank you so much, Tim. And um, that should be our last item for the day. Thanks, so Chad. We'll take this opportunity to adjourn. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Raphael. Okay, have a good day. Thanks, Eileen. Thanks.